On December 8th, when the Girl Archer DLC dropped for Marvel's Avengers, if you were to spend the time necessary to complete the 48th floor Mega Hive, you would not receive exotic drops. A tweet accompanying the announcement of this DLC character made such apparent. A patch recently claimed to fix Kate's exotic drops, allowing people to finally get them, and for an entire day, people could. This patch also nerfed drops, something they tried to get away with, but were then caught doing. Rest assured, <laughs> it was deliberate. However, more recently, a stealth patch has been released with no patch notes that once again breaks the drops. Kate can no longer receive exotics, which is the only reason to waste your time playing the 48 floors of this repetitive robot dog shit that they consider endgame that you are forced to do alone because Crystal Dynamics will not allow you to play with a friend or a stranger. Special thanks to Godslave for his screen caps highlighting people voicing their concern. These poor souls having lost time that they devoted to this joke of a game only to have been lied to about what was supposed to be a guaranteed drop. There's videos on Reddit of people ending the hive and My getting God, nothing. I didn't get an exotic. When it makes it clear that this drop is supposed to be guaranteed. You know what gets on my nerves? It's not the fact that other YouTubers like Simper Rebel and Lejeune refuse to be honest about this game's blatant bullshit. Again, they're probably too busy coughing up pubic hair to respect their audience enough to tell them the truth. What really pisses me off is Crystal Dynamics. When Kate launched, they warned people that you won't get the exotics for the hour plus time that you're going to be investing into this mega hive garbage, 48 floors of fighting robots. But now I'm told that the developers are well aware that the patch removed the drops, but they have not tweeted to make people aware so they don't waste their time the way that they tweeted the first time so that they can, at the very least, absolve themselves of a little bit of responsibility. To be honest, I'm overjoyed to see how incompetently handled this game is and elated that it gets to hobble along disgracing the Marvel license. But isn't this a bit much? Months of delays, months of fixes instead of content, a buggy ass release of a girl archer that nobody asked for. And these fanboys are convincing themselves that it's not that bad. It's not going to be that bad for another month when another archer comes out, homie, and then you wait maybe another month for a real character to drop. Now the patches are literally, not figuratively, going backwards. You know why Marvel's Avengers avoided cyberpunk level backlash? Because nobody plays this garbage. Who would win? Earth's Mightiest Heroes or a couple of jelly beans? The joke, aside from this game and aside from the developers, is that there can't be backlash if most people passed on this game. You tell people, hey, you want Spider-Man? You better buy it here. People are like, Psh, I will wait and I will see how people handle the game. And when the game came out, boy, ooh-wee, here are the facts. Cyberpunk 2077 performs best on PC. CD Projekt Red knew this, and that's why they only sent out PC review copies. But when launch came, the word spread fast. Console had bugs, glitches, awful performance, and hard crashes that were absolutely unacceptable for a $60 AAA title. Does that sound familiar? Marvel's Avengers played exactly as awful at launch, easily worse in my opinion, deleted progress, hard crashes, the game was laughably unplayable. So much so that streamers would just shut the bitch off after they crashed. In fact, the game is currently so dead after three months that streamers will have to be paid to play it. Y'all like Five Gum? Cause this is an ad, my dude. So, how did Marvel's Avengers get away with it? Like I said before, aside from the obvious answer that nobody gives a shit about these ugly knockoff Avengers, the obvious answer is Spider-Man. 
Cyberpunk PC performance is good, but the console performance is bad. Avengers PC performance was bad at launch, but console performance was okay. Pre-launch, however, they made it clear that if you wanted Spider-Man, you better go play on the console. You better go play on that PS4, damn Sony. So, it stands to reason that the majority of the player base would be on console, something you fanboys tell me all the goddamn time when I bring up the PC numbers because there's not even 700 people playing this motherfucker at, at any time. Do you know what I'm talking about? So, the equivalent will probably be if CD Projekt Red was like, Keanu Reeves is gonna be exclusive to PC, and that way you could steer the majority of your player base to PC, but that's not what happened because CD Project Red in that regard isn't out of their mind. However, what Cyberpunk did in the true bed shitting moment was tweet out a promise that they would refund players who wanted it, which of course flooded Sony with so many requests that naturally all of them could not be honored. CD Projekt Red put themselves in a position where Sony was uncomfortably forced to delist Cyberpunk because they're not to blame for Cyberpunk's bullshit. The fact that nobody really bought Avengers and again, it failed to even recover its own production cost tells you everything about this game. For all of Cyberpunk's faults, there's actually content in that game. And ask yourself, do you think it's gonna be this shitty in three months? That's what Marvel's Avengers is. And Marvel's Avengers on PC couldn't even get 30,000 people interested. Again, here's Jelly Beans. Again, here is Cyberpunk. But when your Avengers are uglier than Fortnite skins, when your game is buggy three months after launch, patches breaking, nerfing drops going backwards, I'd rather smack myself in the mouth than pretend this game is worth anybody's time. I made a post on the subreddit about the drop nerfs and a dev said that they'd ask people about it. I heard the change was reverted, but I honestly haven't been back into the game to check. I don't think nerfs like this happen by accident. I'd believe it more if they gave us nothing instead of the 15, but to decrease the amount seems fairly deliberate, and it is the type of thing that they would try to get away with, as only you can with a game that nobody is playing. I don't know how the devs do it, but they clearly are professionals when it comes to sabotaging their own game and the goodwill of players. To that, I tip my hat. The combat team deserves so much more credit than they're getting for keeping this game afloat. As excited as I was to see Doctor Strange and Wanda Maximoff in this game, I'm worried about them just being ruined. Not just their look, which we know this game can't nail, but narratively. You have to wonder if Doctor Strange will show up being, you know, pulling magic tricks and uh, pick a card, any card, like that energy. It just sucks. The Avengers, but we're stuck with these ugly character designs, short haired women with so much coverage and riot gear padding for the guys like, whose dad is this? Whose cop dad is this? Imagine having 50 years to pull from. Again, the problem isn't they don't look like MCU. The problem isn't that they don't look like comic book skins. The problem is if you Google these characters, you would have to go back multiple pages to find a iteration of them that looks even remotely similar to the garbage you've chosen. Thanks, bro. It'll make it easier to distinguish which Avengers sucked. So crystal dynamics from the hearts and minds of the players who might have given your game a chance because you happen to have a property that people cared about. Merry Christmas and thank you once again for this nonsense. Everyone makes mistakes, but when you can't even be transparent about your mistakes, fuck you. Cyberpunk may have the spotlight right now, but they will never be a bigger clown than you. I love violent girl talk, my dude. Ugh. I love violent girl talk. I love violent girl talk.